Hello, now I'm going to talk a little bit about risk management. So you can find risk management in uh, any type of um, engineering discipline, okay? Um, and, and basically what, what the goal of risk management is to identify the risks, then you analyze them, and uh, once you analyze them, you prioritize them, prioritize them and define uh, then how to deal uh, with them. So that uh, either so that you then cope, try to cope with the risks you identify. Okay, and um, in in I'll I'll, I'll, I'll be more um, concrete about this later. But uh, now what I would like to stress is that this is particularly relevant in software engineering because there are a lot of variables that are not easy to control. Okay, so there are people, there are software. Imagine that when you are developing software, you are writing code, right? So, but at the end, in the final product, the lines of code you actually developed are very, very few compared with all the code that actually is inside your product. So there's a risk, there's something that you cannot control. Uh, are you using the right libraries? Should, it can be a, a bug in one of that library. So when you do software development, you are dealing with some size complexity, with a lot of people. So there are a lot of risks. So it's important to assess these risks. And so we're going to discuss a little bit how, how you can do this. Okay. So when you do do risk management, the first thing you're gonna do is a uh, risk identification. So you want you need to identify the risks. You may believe that in most of the cases, if you have a lot of experience, well, this is already in your mind. So you look at the problem. You you before you when you start a project, you already have a, a list of risks in your mind, and you see what are relevant and what what are not relevant. However. In software, things change a lot from project to project. So every project is different because you have a new member in the project, in the team, because you are using a new programming language. So there are so many variables that you should be always careful with the identification of risks. And there are techniques to do this. For instance, brainstorming is a very relevant technique. So brainstorming is a situation when you put people together and you create the the particular context where people can think out of the box. They can think about risks that they probably are not obvious, but uh, that result from these large amount of variables that you cannot control. Of course, in a more controlled environment, checklists are really great to identify risks. Why? Because actually, in that case, the problem is not you don't you do not identify. Uh, risks not because of um, you are missing uh, because you cannot uh, realize you cannot think out of the box but just because you are forgetting about something so uh, doctors when they uh, doctors usually use these kind of things so because there are so many things that they need to control and to check so they use checklists to identify risks and to evaluate things okay okay then you have in the next stage, you do risk analysis. And this analysis, each, you, are, you are going to identify. So the goal is basically to prioritize what are the most relevant risks. Okay? And to do that, you need to, to, to think about the probability and the impact. Basically, the probability is important because there are very large risks that you just do not care because they may have a large impact. So they, the, the, the result of the, the, the occurrence of the risk uh, generates a lot of damage, but actually the probability is so low that you do not care about it, okay? For instance, you may believe that, so I, my, my system is running on top of Linux, and if there's a bug in Linux, then my system is not, not gonna work, but the probability of having a bug in Linux, at least one that damaged my system is so, so low that Basically, I just do not care about it, okay? And the impact is well, actually what is going to happen in the project. So what is the, the, the damage, that the, the occurrence of the risk, okay? And there are things that may pr 
have big impact. Suppose that you have a member of the team and this member of the team has a lot of knowledge, okay? And he's the only guy that knows some parts of the, of the system or some parts of the requirements. Well, it's, if this guy leaves the project, well, this is, has a, a huge impact, okay? So you may consider this as a risk. In the next stage, you do risk planning. Well, to do risk planning, you can either try to reduce the probability or reduce the impact or you just face it. And face it is not uh, uh, too bad in the sense that at least you are aware that it can happen, which is better than uh, we do, it just uh, catch you completely unexpectedly. Okay, so to reduce probability, what you try to do is just you create activities or uh, uh, some, some behaviors inside the team, for instance, so that you reduce the probability that it can happen. So suppose this guy that uh, has very specific knowledge, that only the guy that has knowledge the pro about the project, how can I reduce the probability? Well, I may raise his uh, salary or have a good uh, environment so that he loves to be part of the team. Uh, to address the same risk, a technique to reduce the impact, which probably is smarter, is, would be to share knowledge so that the team share the knowledge so that you don't have a single point of failure inside the team in terms of knowledge. Okay, And of course, to face it, well, in this case, it's just consider it and address it if, when it happens. So finally, in the final stage, it's just you do risk monitoring. And in risk monitoring, what you're going to do is just you're going to monitor the, the risks during the execution of the project and see if the impact changes or the probability changes because then your list that uh, of most, most relevant risks may change during the execution of the project because basically your first assessment of the risks now uh, needs to be, is, is not real not anymore because things change in the project, okay? And something that you did not consider a risk or did not consider to have a big impact on the project actually starts to have an impact. Curiously, most of the times, risks reduce as the project advances because actually you have more knowledge. And by having more knowledge, a lot of the risk is, what, is something that you ignore. So people usually say that, I would like to know when at the beginning of the project what I know now. You have listened to this several times, right? So let's uh, see in terms of um, what are the common uh, risks in a software project, okay? So there are many, too many variables, as I already told you. People, business, technology, a lot of things that may change. So you have a team that uh, developed projects in uh, Java, and now they move to C-sharp. Well, this new project is a big risk because they do not uh, master the technology that they used to be when they developed uh, Java. So, but um, there are several studies which are uh, interesting to analyze, so to have an idea that people that uh, the, does some uh, field studies to identify why projects fail, why software projects fail. And of course, you can take these lists as um, informative and for insights, and uh, they may change with time because things change, people change, education on computer science changes, technology changes, but okay, it's always relevant or interesting to look at these things. And for instance, Barry's Bowen is a very famous uh, software engineer, scientist, which uh, has, has identified uh, 10 uh, top risks. One is a personal, the first personal short faults, the second unrealistic time cost and estimates, the third developing the, the wrong software functions, the fourth developing the wrong software interfaces. So as you see in this first, there's a lot of human issues when you, when you think about this. There are no technical uh, issues. So it seems that when you develop software, sometimes the, the reason because projects fail, they are, well, they may be technical, but it's the technical aspects mixed with people applying this or dealing with the, 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 the technical aspects. So something, just to, something interesting to think about. And then you have the fifth, and the fifth is gold plating. And then it's very funny, this one, because by gold plating is something trying to be 
of a perfect engineering. So trying to get the perfect solution, trying to write the code perfectly. And uh, well, it was identified as a reason why some projects failed. Uh, when you listen to these engineers from Netflix, uh, Facebook, uh, what these big companies or whatever, uh, where they are addressing these kind of things and discussing how do they develop these, these systems, actually what, what, what you realize, they use a very nice word, it is they always talk that you sh should avoid to do over-engineering. So, well, do over-engineering is a risk when you develop a project as well. And then there are other ones like late change of requirements, shortfalls of external supplied components, shortfalls of external performed tasks, and so on. I'm just going to finalize to tell something about late change of requirements and to see how things change. So this is 1991. And land chase of requirements was a big risk of project files. So it means that they try to have all the requirements up front. Do you remember the difference between S systems, P systems, E systems? Well, see change. Now we are thinking, and is in, in when you develop software, you don't try to froze the requirements at the beginning. So things change and that's what is fun about developing software. You keep learning and you keep uh, uh, looking at things with the new knowledge you acquire. So today, the tools and techniques you use make the change of software much easier. So what, what used to be the fixed risk, top risk on software development, which is late change of requirements, today is something that people face and basically they apply techniques and they are not afraid to change code. They are not afraid to change requirements. Okay? Okay. Thank you.